Yes or no? Yes, y'all heard of that before. Why is that? Because we become a byword in this captivity. All right? And one of them bywords is a big mouth black woman. All right? That's the description that we have on our righteous daughters of Sarah today. Because we've been destroyed by the white man, by your oppressor. We follow him in everything. That's why we dress the way we dress today. That's why we act the way we act today. You understand? Because we've been destroyed for rejecting our God and accepting this white man as our God today. This white man right here. That's who our God is today, believe it or not. Right? Some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Y'all don't worship the white man. But we will show you that you do worship the white man. We will show that to you. Finish that in uh, Timothy's. And like men also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shame faceness as the body, not with parted hair or gold. Right, because those things are good. You can get braids in your hair. You can wear gold, right? But what's more important? The things on the external or the things on the inside? I can't hear you. The things on the inside, right? Because on the inside of us, what do we have? Give me that in uh, Mark 7. What type of things do we have on the inside of us today? The things we struggle with, things not so hard or things that's not so easy to change. It's hard to change these things. What type of things do we struggle with today? Man and woman, right? We're going to read this. Brother, what's your name? What's your name? AJ. AJ. So I got Laverne Shay. No, Laverne J and, and AJ. Is that right? All right, what you got? The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. From, from within, out of the heart. Of out of the heart, right? It's saying out of your mind, right? So you got to consider this. Out of your mind comes what types of things, right? Read. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Evil what? Evil thoughts. What's the last evil thought that you had? You ain't got to tell me. Come on. Adultery. So some of us thinking about adultery. You understand? Some of us is thinking about what? Fornication. Some of us think about fornicating. What's fornicating? Fornication. What's fornication? All right. Fornication is when you have a boyfriend and a girlfriend and y'all are having sex. All right. That's all types of whoredom right there. You understand? For one, you shouldn't have a boyfriend, girlfriends don't exist in this Bible. It's not a part of our history at all. All right, and what does that breed? It, it breeds single parent homes with no man in the house, right? Or no woman in the house, all right? No order in the house, no structure, all right? No foundation in the house, that's what that breeds, all right? How did it start? With what you put on that morning. How did it start? With the nigga you attracted that day. All right. How did it start with y'all laying down before y'all married? All right. So all of these things tie together. So if we really want to fix our community. Where do we need to start with how we're thinking? All right. Continue reading. Murders, theft, covetousness. Some of us thinking about stealing things, right? Some of us covet the things that other people have and we're willing to break God's laws to get it. That's covetousness. All right. Come on. Wickedness. We got wicked thoughts in our mind, right? Everybody out here had a wicked thought today. Am I right or am I wrong? Everybody out here. I'm talking about these brothers too that you see had wicked thoughts. It's important that we do what? Overcome those thoughts. All right? Not give in to those thoughts. Not let those thoughts rule your behaviors. You understand what I'm saying? Read on. The see the seriousness, and evil eye. So these things are much harder to control. All right? Than to change how, you, how you're dressing. All right? to change what I see on the external. But guess what? If you change your mind, naturally, what's going to happen? If you start changing on the inside first, all right? It's, if, you, if you start to change your mind and say, okay, I don't want to commit fornication anymore, all right? I don't want to do that anymore. Well, what's the root of that fornication? How are you coming out the house? What type of conversations are you having? Who are you hanging out with, all right? What are y'all doing in your idle time, all right? What are you doing for pleasure, all right? What, what, your entertainment, what type of entertainment are you watching? What are you exposing yourself to, all right? So all of these things, you gotta ask yourself first. If you really wanna change, if you really don't wanna be a single parent trying to raise up a strong man or a strong daughter, because it's impossible to do that without two people in the household submitted to God's laws. It's impossible to do that. So if you really wanna change that, it starts with you and your mind, all right? So when you start to change your mind, you understand? Then you'll start to consider what you're going to put on today before you walk out the door. All right? You're going to consider that. All right? And you're going to start to attract better people around you. 
You understand? Because the Bible says that every beast loveth his kind. All right? So if you are a whore, what you probably going to trap? What you probably going to trap? Give me that it's all right. Every beast loves his kind. All right? If you a whore, what are you probably going to attract? A no good man. There you go. A no good man. All right? So if you out here dressed like a whore, all right, what are you probably going to attract? A no good a no, man. But you're not a whore, though. No. So why are you out here dressed like a whore? You understand? You got to ask yourself these things, all right? I'm not talking to you specifically. Oh, I, I'm talking I, I to everybody know, standing know, out here, all right? Because we're going to go through the apparel to let you know what it looks like, all right? How, how a, a righteous woman will clothe themselves, all right? And how a whore will clothe themselves. We're going to show you these things, all right? Because if y'all deep down believe that you're not a whore, then don't walk out the door dressed like that, all right? We're going to show you this. Read what you got. The Book of Sirach, chapter 13, verse 15. Every beast loveth his life. So the Bible says every beast loveth his life. All right. So if you are a, a brother, a, a brother that's always looking for the sister that's revealing herself, showing herself, you understand? Then that's probably what you're going to get. Right. Come on. And every man loveth his neighbor. I'm going to love the woman that's just like me. She promiscuous. Right. I'm promiscuous, too. You understand? It, that's how that works. Right? That's exactly how that works. So if you don't want a man, all right, that's uh, unfaithful, that is not going to commit himself to you, you understand? If you don't want a man that uh, 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 will not provide for you and his children, all right, that's not a murderer, all right, then you shouldn't put yourself in a situation where, where you're attracting those types of people, all right? Sirach 26 and 23, get that. All right, finish it up. All flesh! Consort of according to kind. So all flesh is going to gather together. All right? So guess what? If y'all some righteous sisters, then y'all the people that you going to spend the most time with is going to be some righteous sisters. All right? But if the people you, if you, if you wear pants, right, then most of the people you hang around probably got pants on. You understand what I'm saying? All right? If you out here and your cleavage out, right, all y'all, most for the most part, got your, you know, cleavage up. But if you walk out, with your cleavage out, most of your friends are probably comfortable, comfortable doing what? They, they probably comfortable wearing it. You see how this work? Most of your friends probably co comfortable leaving the house with your cleavage out. All right, read that, Sarah. Yes, sir. I stay with my family and my mom. I don't And a man will cleave to his life. I ain't talking about your family. I'm talking about the people you spend time with. Period. All right, oh, whoever you spend time with, are they comfortable coming out the house dressed just like you? Um, yes, they are, sister. You gotta so. think about it. Exactly. That's my yeah. point. Every beast love of his kind. Oh, okay, okay. Every beast love of his kind. Don't miss the point, sister. I don't want you to. Don't fall off the horse right now, right? I ain't talking to just you. I'm talking to everybody that's out here that 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 hang out with people that's just like them. All right. Because if if you yourself, all right, are a, a, a whoremonger. All right, and you hang around other whoremongers, it's going to be very difficult for you to come out that whoremongering lifestyle. You understand what I'm saying? Read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 23. Come on. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. So the Bible says that a wicked woman, you understand what I'm saying? Well, how's a wicked woman going to look today? Teach. What's she going to look like? All right, she's going to be haughty. She's going to be proud. You know what I want in Proverbs? About her being haughty? Yes. Hold that. We're coming right back. All right? So a wicked woman is going to be haughty. All right? She's going to be all up in a man's face. You understand? She might even put her hands on a man. You understand? She might call the police and lie to the police about the man. You understand? That's a, wick that's a wicked woman right there. All right? That'll work too. All right? A wicked woman will also be dressed this way. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 10. Come on. And behold, there met him. A woman with the attire of a harlot. So that's another attribute of a wicked woman. The things that she has on. She might be dressed like a hoe. How do a prostitute dress today? How you know a prostitute from a righteous daughter of Sarah? From a righteous woman? What's the difference? You see a girl in the corner, how you know she a prostitute? You got a point there. Just because a person have on something, that don't make them a whore. All right, what's she look like? How you know what a fireman look like? It don't make him a fireman just because he got a fire suit on, right? True. All right, but nine times a ten, what's that probably? A fireman, right? Right. It's probably a fireman. So if we talking about something that's probably a a, a, a harlot, what's she gonna look like? What's she? What, tell me what type of clothes she gonna have on. How her dress gonna be? 
how her shirt gonna be. Right. You understand? You what her hair gonna look like? Is it gonna be extravagant or is it gonna be modest in apparel? Which one is it gonna be? You tell me. All right, so if we not hoes out here, we shouldn't dress like it. You understand? If you know you're not a hoe deep down inside, if you know you're not a harlot deep down inside, we shouldn't come out the house borderline harlot, borderline hoe, borderline prostitute. That's not how we should come out the house. You understand? Why? Because you might be mistaken for that. And guess what you're gonna get? Get back, go back to Sirach chapter 26 and verse 23. Guess what you're gonna get? All right? Why? Because the Bible says every beast love of his kind. Come on. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 23. Come on. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. So what you gonna get? A wicked man. A wicked man. Read it again. What you gonna get? If you come out the house dressed like a prostitute, dressed like a hoe, you understand? Cleavage out, legs out, you understand? Camel toe out, all of that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you come out like that, guess what you gonna get? I say it again. A wicked man, right? Read what you got. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. To a wicked man, right? So get uh Sirach chapter 25. Verse 21. Alright? Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 21. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman. So if you got a prostitute, right? What does she want everybody to do? Teach. Read it again. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman. So if you have a prostitute, right? What does she want everybody to do that passes her by on that corner? She wants all of those brothers to stumble at her beauty. Am I right or am I wrong? Right? I'm right, right? Right? So she's focused on attracting, you understand, some type of wicked spirit to her. Right? She want to she wanna attract... She want to uh, trap as many men as she can get to make her money to pay her bills or to make her money to take care of her children, so on and so forth, right? So what is she doing? Using her appearance, you understand, to attract the wrong type of man. You going to get a righteous man like that? No, you're not. You're not going to get a righteous man like that, right? Come on. And desire her not for pleasure. And desire her not for what? Not for pleasure. But most of our sisters today, they dress the way they dress. Why? Because they looking for pleasure. Right? Why do sisters go to the club? I can't hear you. To look for pleasure. Why they go to the club? They trying to get what? Chosen. That's why sisters go to the club. They want uh, AJ. Why you go to AJ? You been to the club before? Nope. You've never been to the club before. Okay. All right. My man right here. You been to the club before? My brother with the hat on. Right here. Hey, right here. You, have you ever been to the club in your, in your lifetime? When you, maybe when you was younger or whatever. All right, when you went to the club, all right, what were you trying to pick up? You laughing. You, la you know what I'm talking about, right? What were you trying to do, man? You be honest. Like any other man do it. Like any, every other man in the club, right? Trying to do what? Women. Say it again? Pick up a woman. To do what? <laughs> yeah, so so you, you understand what I'm, So why we hang out at these places? Why we go to the club? To go pick up women. Well, why do women go? To pick up men. Why? So everybody can come together and have pleasure. But what does the Bible say? Come on. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 9. Read. The whoredom of a woman may be known and her hearty looks and eyelids. Right, so the whoredom of a woman will be known in how she's dressed, right? But when you get that woman, the only reason you're picking up in the first place is because you want her for pleasure. That's it. Then you're done with her. You understand? It's a wrap. The Bible says we shouldn't move that way. Marriage is honorable. Go back to Hebrews, all right? Yes, sir. Marriage is honorable. That lifestyle, you understand that whoremongering lifestyle, all right? Wow. There's judgment for that. Worse than the man. Some of the woman is worse than a man, right? Now let me ask you this. The woman that's worse than a man, is she shame face? No, because she don't care. Is she modest? No, because she don't No, care. she's not, because she doesn't care, all right? She don't care about herself, and she don't care about her people. Because if she cared about her people, then she would dress herself in a way to not cause them to fall in harm's way. You understand what I'm saying? Read what you got. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all. Come on. 
and the bed on the foul. Read. But whoremongers! Whoremongers is, is everybody that's dressed like a whore too, right? Because if you dress like a whore, you might be mistaken for a whore when Christ comes back. You understand? It should be a difference between who the hoes are, all right, and who the righteous women are. It should be a difference. You shouldn't be able to look at all of them, you understand, and everybody look the same, right? Because a man, the Bible says, is known by his look. So you're going to carry yourself a certain way, all right? And But where did that start? In your mind. So once you can change your mindset, it's going to show on the outside, right? You're not going to let yourself come out the house dressed any type of way. You're going to consider these things. Come on. Marriage is honorable and all. Come on. And the bed on the foul. Uh, but homeowners and adulterers, God will judge. So God says he's going to judge these people. Deuteronomy chapter 22, all right? We're going to show you a law in the Bible. This is a law that all of our women should be keeping today. All right? This is probably the most common way today that our women come out the house dressed like a whore. Dressed like a prostitute. You understand? Come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertain unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So if I was to put on a woman's garment today, that would be a dress or a skirt, right? Would you take me serious? If I had a dress or a skirt on, would you take me? No, you wouldn't, all right? But don't miss the top part of that verse. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. The Bible says that a woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. What type of clothing y'all got on right now that pertains to men? All of y'all. That pertain to men. What type of clothes do men wear? Jeans. What type of jeans, shorts? What are they called? Britches, pants. You understand? Women shouldn't wear pants. That's a that's a, a a man's attire. But the women's pants today are so are so tight that you can see all of their curves. You can see their whole camel toe. You can see their cracks and all of that. Uh, what type of underwear they got on? All of that stuff you can see what the type of pants a woman wear today. You understand? That's why it's it's uh it's all it's it's underwear today. That's what it is. You come outside with your underwear on today. Right? That's what you come outside with it on. But the Bible says that a woman should not wear that which, which pertains to a man at all. Pants pertain to men. All right? So those which you have on, sister, are pants, right? Yeah. All right. So you should not have those on. They were created for who? Men to wear. All right? Thus saith the Lord in the Bible. Your grandmother probably didn't wear pants. All right? The woman that was brought over here on slave ships got off the ships. Uh, came off the auction blocks and was sold to the enemies put in the cotton fields. They weren't picking cotton with pants on. Who had pants on? The masters. You understand? The the men. All right? The guys, the lords, they had pants on. You ain't seen no sisters out there with pants on. Whether they was whether they was a uh, 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 so-called black person or so-called white person. They didn't exist. Uh, you understand? It didn't exist at all. All right? We learned to put pants on when when the white woman learned to put pants on. That's when we learned to put pants on. Prior to that, that wasn't even a thought in our mind to, to come out the house dressed that way, all right? And now, we put those pants on, we make them so thin, we make them so tight that they're not even pants no more, they underwear. That's what they are. You can't even say that they pants anymore. They are, they're, they're, they're clothes that you should have under something. That's it. They're undergarments. They should be undergarments. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Read what you got. The woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. My, my fault. Read that last part again. I'm sorry. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So if you do that thing, right, the way that God looks at you, all right, he's not looking at you like you're uh, one of his princesses. You understand? God's not looking at you that way. He's looking at you like you're some garbage. You don't want God to look at you like you garbage, like you trash, right? You don't want God to look at you that way. And I know you don't want the niggas that you pick up from dressing that way to treat you like garbage. I know you don't want that. That's not what you leave out the house hoping you're going to come home with at the end of the night. But that's what you get time after time after time after time. All right? So when we going to change? When we gonna do something different? All right? There you go. You gotta, what you gotta put on? A long dress so that it covers your body, right? Because those things should be preserved for who? 
yourself and who else? And your man. And your man. You got your husband. You understand? Not just any man. I don't have a All right. Not uh, uh not just any man, but it should be preserved for your husband. All right. That's how we rebuild our community. You understand? That's how we do that. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.